What's going on guys, CTA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you the best Raspberry Pi powered Game Boy that I've ever come across. Before we get started here, I just kind of want to get this out of the way. I am not affiliated with the creator of this whatsoever. I'm not making any money if any of you buy them. He simply sent me one for review, so that's what I'm going to do. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I've done a lot of reviews on Raspberry Pi powered handhelds, but I'm serious when I say this. This one is the best that I've ever seen. This was actually sent in by a viewer, and yes, he does make them. He sells them fully assembled with no ROMs and no operating system. He also sells kits. They range from $150 to $250. It really depends on how you want yours set up. Now, the first comment I'm going to get is, why don't you just buy a PSP or a PS Vita or just use your Android phone? If you're thinking that way, that's totally fine. You can do that. But there are thousands and thousands of people out there that would rather have something like this, a do-it-yourself kit, than buying something on the second-hand market and modding it with some software. You can get these in several different configurations. He actually sent me two models. The white one here has a Raspberry Pi 3B in it, and the transparent one here has a Raspberry Pi 3A+. So that's the newer, smaller version of the Raspberry Pi 3 with 512 megs of RAM. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on the Raspberry Pi 3B version here, but I do plan on making a dedicated video on the 3A Plus version. Now, the first thing that stands out is the analog stick. We got our six face buttons. We got a start, select, D-pad, and around back. We have an L and R button also. There's two options for the analog stick. You can get the GPD XD version of the analog stick or the PS Vita version. The unit I have in my hand right now has the GPD version of the analog stick, but the other one that he sent me has the Vita version. Either way, both of them work great. I'm going to go ahead and boot this up. Then we're going to get some detailed pictures. I want to go over the specs, show you all the ports, and then we're going to get into some gameplay. One thing I really hate about these custom Pie Boys are the screens, but this one's much different. It has a 3.5 inch IPS display that is crystal clear. Viewing angles are great and hopefully the camera picks this up. It is beautiful. So if you do decide to pick one of these up, you will have to flash your own image and add your own games to it, but he will provide you with a custom configuration file so you can get the screen up and running. And he's done a lot of tweaks to a lot of these emulators. So real quick, I do want to go over the specs and the I.O. and then we'll get right into some gameplay. So like I already mentioned, we have the 3.5 inch IPS display, six action buttons on the front, D-pad, start select, and obviously the analog stick. We also have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack at the bottom for our headphones. Over on the right hand side, we have our volume control, our SD card slot, and one USB 2.0 port for adding games or just adding an extra controller if you wanted to. On the top of the unit, we have our power switch, our micro USB, and a battery indicator. So the battery indicator has several levels here. Blue is full, green is 80, green red is 50%, red is 30%, and flashing is 10%. This does have a 7,000 milliamp hour battery, which should be good for three to five hours of gameplay. On the left hand side, we have a full ethernet port because there is a Raspberry Pi 3 inside of here. We also have a rocker for brightness control on the IPS display. Around back, we have our trigger buttons, L and R. Overall, the device is built very well. Now, I do want to do a tear down on this. I'm going to make a separate video on tearing one of these down because I do want to see what's inside of here. But I can tell you that there is a giant heat sink on this Pi. And on the new versions, he's actually added an internal fan. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into some gameplay. I basically just flashed RetroPie to a 64 gigabyte card. I added a bunch of games and his configuration file. First up, we got to test out N64. First up, we have Mario 64. I mainly wanted to get into N64 because of the analog stick. And there's a bunch of games that run pretty decently on the Raspberry Pi 3. And if you add his configuration file, you're going to notice they run really well on this little device. I'm just going to kind of jump around to different emulators here and there. Now this is a Pi 3 in here, so SNES, Genesis, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, Virtual Boy, PC Engine, MAME, FB Alpha, Neo Geo, all that stuff's going to run great. I kind of wanted to test some higher end stuff on this thing. Oh, 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 oh,
Next up, we have PlayStation 1. This is Crash Bandicoot 2. The analog stick isn't working for this because these games weren't made for analog sticks. The original PlayStation only had the D-pad. Later on, they added the DualShock, but a lot of these games just didn't support it. You could probably go into RetroArch and program the analog stick, but I'm used to playing with the D-pad on the PS1 anyway. The Pi 3 isn't great at PSP emulation, but there are a few titles that run great, like Little Big Planet, and a lot of the PSP minis work well. Want to test out some Dreamcast? We'll do Power Stone, one of my favorite fighting games. Actually, Power Stone 2 was my favorite, but I just loaded up Power Stone here. I personally haven't tested Dreamcast in a little while on the Raspberry Pi 3, but Power Stone seems to be running really good. I did notice a few hiccups here and there, but it is playable. A lot of these custom Game Boy Pies have Raspberry Pi Zeros installed. Since we're running a Raspberry Pi 3 inside of here, we're going to be able to do Game Boy Advance really well, so if you're into Pokemon, that's a big plus for this one here. Even SNES doesn't run at full speed on the Raspberry Pi Zero. The final emulator I wanted to test in this video was Sega Genesis, otherwise known as Mega Drive in other parts of the world. This is Sonic the Hedgehog 2. On the Zero, this is kind of laggy when you get up to full speed, but as you can see here, sound is dead on and the game is running really smooth. After hours of messing around with this custom Game Boy Pi, I can definitely say that this is the best one that I've ever tested. It's the best one I've ever got my hands on. Now, I'm sure there's somebody out there who has one that'll run N64 at a million frames per second and only cost them $10, but they'll never make a video on it. They'll never tell you where they got it, and it's the only one in the world. So if you're interested in picking up a kit or an assembled version, I'm going to leave his Facebook link and email in the description. He goes by LCL. This is kind of a side gig for him, so I don't think he's going to be able to get to everybody who wants one, but it's worth a shot. Like I mentioned, you will have to install your own software and games, but it's pretty easy to do. I completely understand that spending $150 to $250 for emulation is a lot of money for a lot of people. So if you really want to do some handheld emulation, you can pick up a PSP for pretty cheap, a PS Vita with older firmware, or even just use the Android phone that you have in your pocket. But there are a lot of people who love the Raspberry Pi, and they're definitely going to want to get something like this in their hands. So in the end, it's totally up to you and what kind of direction you want to go in. But I can tell you that if you spend your hard-earned money on one of these units here, you're not going to be disappointed. I'm really impressed with the quality and the performance here. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Keep an eye on the channel because I will be posting another video on the other unit I have, which contains the Raspberry Pi 3A+. If you're interested in seeing that, make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on. Really appreciate you watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.